Okay, first if it seems a little disjointed, then I will state the fact that this is my notes for the show tonight. Yeah, I made the mistake yet again to do the whole... You see, I did what the normal matches. Like, there's two matches on here that are normal. But everything else... Try to read this if you possibly can. Look at that. Yeah. See? They're right there. That's the match. That's And there is the commentary on the match. Needless to say, if this is a little jumbled and it sounds really awkward, I'm just telling you right off the top it's going to happen. So, I like to call this cause and effect. And cause and effect is in the case of Bo Dallas. Obviously, we're talking about two Bo Dallas matches on this show, on these videos. And I want to state real quick that the cause, obviously, is Bo Dallas facing Big E in a match that if he does not win, well, basically, he's going to have to leave NXT. And the effect being the match on SmackDown he had with Sin Cara that was after the aftermath of the aforementioned NXT match. We were talking NXT and SmackDown again this week. And, obviously, this is the go-home show to TakeOver. TakeOver will be this Thursday night on the WWE Network. I'll actually be in Maleficent when this is taking place. So I will be watching it after the fact. And I don't know when that recap is coming up. I know that it looks like it's probably going to be Saturday, depending on my schedule. I don't know what's going on for a schedule yet. I won't know that until at least tomorrow at the very earliest. So, let's talk about the NXT TakeOver Go Home Show, and then we're going to talk about SmackDown, which is still on the road to next Sunday and Payback, because it's, it's now officially Monday. So, a week from yesterday is Payback, and we're going to be talking about Payback in just a minute. <clears throat> By a minute, I mean after the NXT recap. Yeah, this is all over the place. I apologize. Uh, I'm not looking very... I'm kind of looking disheveled today, I guess I can say. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going into why. So, before the match even starts, Bo Dallas has abandoned his old babyface fire music, and now he is coming out to his inspirational music that... I don't know why, but for some reason it makes me either want to ride Soren or Wild Arctic at, sea, at SeaWorld. So, yeah, I get that vibe. It's kind of like very inspirational music. I almost want to go outside and just start climbing things. Like, So yeah, it gives me the inspiration to believe. So he gets on the mic and he says, My believers, I've always taught you to never give up and to follow your dreams. And we will do this together. NXT was built upon believing. I'm Mr. NXT. I don't see fans out there, I don't see the WWE Universe, I see a family, and I will never give up on you. I promise you I will never leave you. Don't stop, Bo leaving. And of course we bring out Big E, it gets a huge reaction from the Full Sail crowd, like he always does. And we come back to live action from that, right after the first commercial break. And Big E normally hits the clothesline, clothesline, duck the opponent's clothesline, and the belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Well, that goes off, but the first time, instead of a ruined clothesline, he changed it up on me, and he hit a shoulder block instead. So, he gets the Vader attack on Bo, and he drops the straps, going for the big ending. It gets countered into a reverse DDT, gets a two off of that. <clears throat> the charging clothesline in the corner on Big E, and the repeated clotheslines in the corner... He goes for the uh, Believe It or Not, which is now what I'm referring to as the Swinging uh, Bulldog, and or the uh, Stratisfaction, I guess you would say. It's a Swinging Bulldog is what it is. Gets caught, overhead, release, belly-to-belly, -belly, suplex, one-two, and Bo Dallas kicks out. Goes for the big splash. He gets the knees up, and the double underhook DDT gets a two-and-a-half off of it. Takes off the wrist tape for some reason, and basically unties the turnbuckle pad. He tries to get the advantage and he ends up getting tossed by Big E into the exposed buckle, eats the big ending, one, two, three, and Bo Dallas is officially gone from NXT. 
After the match is over, we actually get a nice tantrum from Bo Dallas. He says, this is my home, and everyone's saying, na 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 hey, 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 goodbye. And he's like, don't leave me, and of course, Bo is feeling forsaken by his uh, NXT brethren. And even during the commercial break, Bo ends up throwing a temper tantrum on the outside, and he kicks the side of the barricade, and he, like, clutches his ankle. And the fans are not chanting, Bo, leave. They're chanting, Bo, leave. As in, get out, go away. And he gets on the mic and he says, I want you all to know, I strongly dislike each and every one of you. I love Bo Dallas, so awesome. He says, I don't use language like this normally, but I just want to say, you people stink. And basically, you all should have Bo, leaved. And he tells the crowd to leave, and they're chanting, Bo, leave, as in, Bo, leave. And it goes back and forth for a few minutes, and they mock him by basically playing the uh, copycat game, saying everything Bo says back to him. And he says, you know what, I'm going to be the bigger man, and I'm just going to leave. And the fan's like, yes, yes, they're chanting for the elimination of Bo Dallas off the NXT roster. And, of course, that leads to Bo Dallas debuting on SmackDown, coming up later on in this video. So we get our next match, and it is the Divas Champion, Paige, taking on Tamina Snuka in a non-title match. This match, um, you know, I'll say right now, I don't know what it is about Paige and Tamina. I haven't liked their matches. They're okay, but they should have been a lot more. Uh, Paige needs to have a decisive victory and not a fluke roll-up, and that's pretty much what this match ends with. <coughs> Excuse me. So Tamina with a bear hug. <clears throat> Whips Paige in, big clothesline, one, two, and a kick out. Pushes her off to the ropes and hits those kidney forearms two times. And then locks her in a torture rack, weirdly using the torture rack. And, of course, it gets countered into a firewoman's carry. And she tries to elbow her way out. She hits the Matt Morgan elbows in the corner and a short arm clothesline and basically a rolling short arm clothesline. And... A running knee strike into a short arm clothesline, which gets the crowd to chant for CM Punk, because that's what happens when you do a running knee strike into a short arm clothesline. So eventually, Paige ends up getting put on the top rope and shoved off the top rope, off to the ring apron, onto the floor. Paige is tossed back in the ring, and Tamina goes up top for the super fly splash and knees up. Rolls her into a very awkward inside cradle and uh, Paige wins. So yeah, not the decisive victory Paige needs to have right now. Especially when the fact that she's not been very dominant as the Divas Champion yet. So hopefully we'll start to rectify that very soon. And the match that Paige ends up having against Alicia Fox is at least what it looks like at this point. It hasn't been announced yet. I'm sure it'll be announced tonight on Raw for the Divas Championship will be a little bit better than the matches that have been had lately. Not not a very good start for Paige as a champion so far, which is a shame, because anybody that's ever seen her work before knows the girl can go. So, I mean, it's interesting to see exactly where we're going to go from here. Excuse <coughs> me. So, of course, we have the two people that did not win last week in our three-way matchup, and that is Sami Zayn and Tyler Breeze. And they get into it for a bit, and you know what? They agreed to have a match at TakeOver themselves. And let's say that it's going to be a match with the number one contendership on the line. So the winner of the match between Sami Zayn and Tyler Breeze at TakeOver will get a shot against the NXT champion, whomever that may be. So, we're looking at that, and that means we get Sami Zayn and Tyler Breeze in a singles match, and I have absolutely no problems with this, because they are going to have a really awesome match, and I'm very much looking forward to it. So, we get our next match. It is our final semi-final matchup in the NXT Women's Championship Tournament. Obviously, last week, Charlotte advanced by defeating Alexa Bliss, and this week, we have Natalya taking on Charlotte's BFF partner, the boss, Sasha Banks. So, um, this match was really short, too. It was okay for what it was, actually. I really enjoyed the situations we had going into it. A lot of back and forth. And, uh, Sasha really hung with Natalya very well. Sasha is a bulldog, and it seems like she tweaked her leg. 
So she goes to the floor to regroup, and Charlotte basically tosses her in. She gets double leg, sharpshooter, and that's it. So Natalia wins. She's going to be facing off against Charlotte at, in the finals next week at TakeOver. And then we get a matchup. I did this out of order, but this is how it works. Adam Rose comes out, and of course he's facing off against Camacho. A very short match. Basically, Rose gets the upper hand and goes for the party foul. Party foul is shoved off by Camacho. He bombs out, takes the count out loss. So that was pretty much the end right there. We're leading towards another matchup between these two, probably at TakeOver. It hasn't officially been announced yet, but I'm sure it'll be one of those unannounced matches that happens on the uh, card next week. We have two hours to uh, put content into, so obviously you need to do something with that. So... We got that set up, and yeah, it was nice to see Garrett Dillon back as Captain Comic. Uh, presumably, Garrett Dillon as Captain Comic, if you believe anything. So yeah, that is leading up to a match for next week's show. Like I said, this is all over the place. I apologize for that. The main event is the NXT champion Adrian Neville taking on Kurt Hawkins. This match was good for what it was. Hawkins taking advantage, being the veteran that he is in the ring. And basically, he ends up eating the red arrow and losing the matchup. After the match is over, Tyson Kidd, who will be Neville's opponent next week at TakeOver, comes out and congratulates him, but he makes it well known that he's going to utilize NXT as a springboard, as a stepping stone, if you will. And you notice people that have done that before, yeah, that they didn't fare too well. Uh, Brodus Clay tried to do that too, and look what happened. So Tyson Kidd is now setting himself up as the de facto heel for the matchup next week. So he basically said that he's trying to lay out a bunch of facts, and the fact is he was born on Raw, and he's been on SmackDown, and he's been a tag team champion. How funny, given the fact that Kurt Hawkins has been on Raw, he's been on SmackDown, he's been a WWE Tag Team Champion, and he's also had a WrestleMania moment, just like Tyson Kidd has. Hmm, maybe they're one and the same. Obviously they're not, but still they have the same story. So, basically, he's talking about how it's going to be his launching pad to rejuvenate his career and get him back to the heights he had back in the Hart Dynasty. Obviously, he didn't mention the Hart Dynasty, but he's basically saying this is going to be how he rejuvenates his career. Neville says, I'm not any one stepping stone. You're talking about the future. Well, that means I am the future. And I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but this is my ring. And the only person connected to you that's going to be walking out with a championship after NXT a TakeOver is going to be your wife. So basically, said that Natalya is going to win her match and Tyson Kidd's going to lose his. So yes, that was NXT in 13 minutes. I'm proud of myself. So, Bo Dallas and Big E have had better matches. At the match where Bo Dallas won, the NXT Championship was better, but it told a story, and it told a congruent story, and the fact that we will not see Bo Dallas in NXT ever again, and now he can transition to his spot on the WWE main roster, and he does so in the match that I'm going to talk about in a little bit. Paige gets a fluke roll-up on Tamina Snuka. It's okay, but I really wish they'd do something with having her win decisively. I get it. Her size is going to be an issue. But we've done the David versus Goliath thing before. So, it can be done. I mean, Spike Dudley made a career out of it. So, I mean, when it comes down to it, I would think that you really need to have Paige winning decisively. And she needs to win with authority and prove why she is not just a fluke champion and she's not champion just because Naomi ended up getting injured because Oksana dropped the knee the wrong way and cracked her orbital bone. Because basically, in all essence, that's what happened. But I won't take anything away from Paige because obviously I've been trumpeting Paige ever since I first saw her. And I would say that there would be a good reason to believe that the match with Alicia Fox that they probably will officially announce on Raw tonight, given the fact this is the go-home show for Payback coming up tonight, that something is going to come out of it. So, yes. I will say Natalia and Sasha Banks put on a pretty good match, actually. A pretty short match, but it was good for what it was. And I want to see more, actually, Sasha. I'm looking forward to her getting brought up to the main roster eventually. Adam Rose and Camacho had a little short brawl. Basically led to Camacho getting fed up and leaving, so he wanted nothing to do with Adam Rose that once he got rejuvenated by basically getting his head slammed in the turnbuckle numerous times. He got ticked off. And he basically made Camacho pay for it. But Camacho 
ran away to fight again another day. The main event was good. I really wish it could have been longer. Give these guys 10 minutes, and I promise you it would be worth your while. I really like Kurt Hawkins. I like the fact that Hawkins has been utilized in his singles matches in NXT. The first one was against Sami Zayn, which I really enjoyed calling when Zayn debuted with the company, at least on television. And I do like this match with Adrian Neville. I thought it told a very awesome story, and I thought it was really well done. I'd like to see them against each other yet again. I really think... There is money to be made with Kurt Hawkins, but not major money to be made with Kurt Hawkins. I do think that Kurt Hawkins would be a good person to utilize on NXT a whole lot more. I know he basically was cannon fodder in the Battle Royal a couple of weeks ago, but I would like to see more one-on-one -on -one matches with Hawkins, and maybe you can build him a perfect candidate for that NXT Secondary Championship I've been talking about for a while. As a matter of fact, if you want to bring back the old FCW 10 championship and just, like, change the name or change the stipulation, you don't necessarily have a television title, you don't necessarily have to have an internet championship, just have a secondary championship for these superstars to fight over, guys like Aiden English and guys like a Kurt Hawkins, ones that are not necessarily, they are ready, but... They're not going to be pushed towards the main championship just yet. They need some sort of a stepping stone championship. A championship that the mid-carters can fight over. And I really think that needs to be utilized. Now they're really focusing as much as they are on NXT as a division. And as a separate company, in essence, from WWE. So, let's talk about SmackDown, shall we? Well, first off... It has been let out via the internet that this version of SmackDown that I got to watch was actually available to me several days ago, and the only reason I did not get to it is because I had a lot of Halloween Horror Nights information. I still do. I have another video coming up on Wednesday, for those of you that are curious. And obviously this weekend was packed. We had AJ's movie reviews, we had five movies on the video on Friday, we had the spoiler alert for X-Men Days of Future Past, and we had the brand new Versus, which was NARC and Training Day. That and all the strange hours I've been getting lately, I ended up having to ch work on Saturday, which I wasn't scheduled, so I came in anyway, and ended up working different hours yesterday because of the WDW Today Live podcast, and now here I am talking about NXT and SmackDown. Obviously, not necessarily a week late. I mean, I'm still, it's still going to say last week on the video, as you can see when you clicked on this video, but it will not be, like, fresh in my mind. As in, it just aired. I just watched it, but there's that. Now, another thing is the fact that this was the unedited version that I watched. It was an hour and 45 minutes, and it did include a lot of the uh, footage of JBL and Michael Cole uh, talking in between matches, and also some of the uh, things that get said, and a whole lot of making fun of Tony Chimmel, which is pretty much what they live to do. So, the video actually started out with the introductions of JBL, Michael Cole, and, um, basically, JBL ran down the ramp like an idiot, and Cole says, I cannot wait until he takes that bump coming down the ramp. They bring out Jimmy Hart to a Gentry song, how appropriate, and, um, I believe it was the Rick, Spr it was the Rick Springfield song, the Gentry's did. And when the live show starts, Jimmy Hart is already in the ring, and he brings out Hulk Hogan, who basically comes out to show for the WWE Network, and to put over the fact he's happy to be over across the pond again, brother, and he's also putting over the fact that Jimmy Hart hasn't been the same since Legends House, which also puts an idea in everyone's head that Hulk Hogan needs to be utilized on Legends House as well. So, they put over the network, and Hogan says, The future looks bright for all the British Hulkamaniacs because the WWE Network is coming to the UK. It's not announced when, but it's going to be coming soon. Which, if you are a Halloween Horror Nights uh, updater, you would notice right now that soon is a bad, bad word at this point. Soon might as well be another four-letter word. So, instead of saying the S word, I'm not talking about excrement. I'm talking about the word soon. Anyone watching this video that's uh, connected to Halloween Horror Nights in any form will understand what I mean by the word soon. We get our opening matchup, and what a doozy it was. No disqualification, Batista taking on Dolph Ziggler, who's getting a rejuvenated... I can't necessarily call it a push, but he's kind of getting 
matches here and there where he's getting to be able to show his stuff. He's being able to shine a little bit more, get a lot more shine than he normally is. Normally gets squashed like a bug and whoop, done the party. But now he's getting a little bit more with, obviously, Dan O'Brien's absence. You need to have someone that can show off, and Dolph Ziggler is literally the show off. We go midway through this match, and Batista tries to spear Dolph through the barricade. And sure enough, Dolph out of the way. Batista goes shoulder first into the barricade, and Dolph nails him with the cactus clothesline, sends him over into Justin Roberts' land, which, of course, is the uh, timekeeper's area. I like to call it Justin Roberts' land, because that's where Justin Roberts lives, literally. He lives in that area. Every single arena, he sets up shop. It's like the old coal mine. So we go into it, and he whips Dolph hard in the barricade, and he ends up catching him with a power slam, and it gets countered, and he stops before he gets posted, and he clotheslines Dolph for good measure. He grabs a chair, and Dolph steals it from him and wears him out with a chair. Three big shots to the lower back and the spine. So... Dolph gets in the ring, and Batista rolls out, and of course, Batista gets nailed from behind in the back of the head by Dolph, whips him hard into the ring steps, rolls him in, charges him with a big splash into a 12 punch into the reverse neck breaker, nails Batista with the exclamation point DDT, gets a two out of it, name dropper, countered into the Batista bomb, countered into a sunset flip, which also rolls through, name dropper connects this time, gets a two off of that, Batista rolls to the floor to break up Dolph's momentum, and gets caught with a baseball slide drop kick, which sends Batista over the table and onto Michael Cole. So Michael Cole's down and out at this point, and JBL is by himself on commentary, which is a big red flag right there. So Dolph crowns him off the table and pounds away on Batista and whip in reverse and Dolph gets sent into the ring steps for good measure. So Batista separates the steps. Michael Cole says the line of the night that would have been completely talked about during a non-PG era WWE. But he says, I have 500 pounds of men on top of me. And of course, when it's not filming, this is actually mentioned by... JBL as a missed softball, basically. So basically, Cole threw a softball at JBL and he didn't even try to swing. Obviously, it's a PG era. You really couldn't. So we have that and made me laugh somewhat. He goes with the Batista bomb on the floor. Dolph, turnabout is fair play, just like last week when he got disqualification, was disqualified, which led to this match that we're having right here. Dolph with a low blow. So Dolph's on the ring apron, he's going for the name dropper off the ring apron, he charges off, Batista out of the way, and Dolph catches his leg on the back of the steps. So he tosses him in, nails the body check, gets a three off of that, and Batista bombs Dolph to send a message to anyone in the shield, obviously. So, good match, I enjoyed it for what it was, and it worked pretty well for me. I will say that... I like this match a lot, and I don't know if it'll repeat repeated on Raw tonight, because usually they like to repeat the matches on SmackDown, because if you haven't noticed, not everybody watches SmackDown, because a lot, because people will end up having things to do on Friday nights, I guess, so, I mean, I don't, and people, other people do, but yeah, there's always that, so yeah, I would say that they'll probably do a version of this match on Raw tonight, if I had to guess, maybe another notice qualification match, I hope so, I'd love to see another match between these two, I'd love to see Dolph win one of these, actually, um, by pinfall. I know that'll never happen. The only way that would happen, okay, I think Dolph Ziggler can beat Batista by pinfall in a notice qualification match on Raw tonight when Roman Reigns comes in and spears him, and then basically Dolph can take the win that way. I think that actually might happen. I really do actually at this point. So, we get our next match after an awesome Bo Leave promo, which I love so much, and it is tag team action. The Funkadactyls, uh, Cameron and Naomi, taking on the unorthodox team of Nikki Bella and Eva Marie. Yeah. And your special guest referee is my favorite and someone who's oh so gorgeous, that is Summer Rae, wearing the zebra stripes better than anyone I've ever seen. So, this match was all over the place. It was short, and obviously, when it came down to it, we told the story from the uh, perspective of Total Divas. If you don't watch the show, you're kind of clueless to what's going on. I watch Total Divas, and I'm still not sure exactly what's going on with the, the numbers and uh, the uh, rating of the matches, that Natalia and Nikki Bella match. 
all out over the place. This I totally understand because it's been made perfectly clear that Summer Rae is uh, basically the black sheep of uh, Total Divas and she has no allies and that is the reason why she was utilized as the referee for this tag team match. And obviously Brie is not teaming up with her sister because she's on her honeymoon. It makes perfect sense, right? So I will say this match was interesting and I really like this. And, you know, if they're going to call them by their real names, by Arion and Trinity, why don't you just change the Funkadactyl's names to Arion and Trinity? It's too confusing sometimes. To, it's like, it really is like we're living in another world. And even to the point that when you see them in Total Divas now, it doesn't say just Trinity, or it doesn't say Naomi. It says Naomi slash Trinity, or Trinity slash Naomi, or it's so stupid. So yeah, I understand we're in another world here with Total Divas somewhat, but you're like blurring the lines because obviously you're utilizing the storylines from the show onto your main broadcast. So yeah, you need to make it make up your mind what you want to do with that. So I like this uh, sequence actually, and Naomi goes for the uh, the full Nelson bomb, the split legged full Nelson bomb that she hit on AJ, and. She hits it, and of course, mm, excuse me, she gets caught, and Summer won't make a count. So, she's going for it, it gets reversed by Nikki, Nikki tries to roll her up, no, doesn't happen. So, tagging to Cameron, and Cameron's first move in the match, she hits a lung blower. The Chris Jericho version of the lung blower, or the Naomichi Marafuji version of the lung blower. And sure enough, yeah, nothing, nothing there at all. I don't know why Cameron decided to utilize that maneuver of all things, but Nikki with a drop kick, Eva gets tagged in. They take Cameron down, leg sweeper, no count. Eva argues with Summer Ray. Oh, sorry, long day. Yeah, Eva argues with Summer Ray and ends up getting rolled up from behind by Cameron. One, two, three, and that's it. So yeah, super heel ref Summer Ray. So that was interesting. Uh, I really like her as a ref. It's pretty awesome, I'm not gonna lie. I, anything I can see from Summer Rae makes me a happy, happy, happy person. So, we get our next match, and it is the official WWE SmackDown debut of the new incarnation of Bo Dallas. And this is the inspirational speaker, Bo Dallas. So Bo gets on the mic before the match starts. He says, he is living proof that dreams can come true. Things that are beautiful cannot be seen or heard. They have to be felt with your heart. All you have to do is just believe. So we go midway through this match. It's really short, actually. And um, Sin Cara with a flying forearm and nails the handspring back elbow. It makes a cover one, two, and a kick out. And basically, he hits the high kick, goes up top for the Sinton Bomb, and he misses. Bo Dallas plants him with a monstrous clothesline, and then finishes him off with the uh, Bo Leave It or Not, which is the Swing Bulldog, and gets the three off of that. After the match is over, he basically has a victory lap around, and helps up his fallen opponent, shakes his hand, and says, One day... You will be something. One day, you will be able to compete, and maybe one day you'll be able to beat me. So that was pretty awesome. Don't ever stop trying, and don't stop believing. So we get our uh, our awesome Wyatt family promo, because I love these so much. When we get back from commercial break, and of course, Bray's in the rocking chair of Harper and Rowan on opposite sides. Evil is very real, and it's all around us. But people, they tend to live in a bubble, and they don't see it for themselves. People are prisoners of society, which is exactly what they want. And then when people start to raise their eyebrows, there's someone like John Cena paraded out to tell them to believe and to do the right thing. That they don't live in a prison. You live wherever you want. So, we get... Some raw highlights, as always, and then once we get back from what happened, we get this. The C Nation has infected our world like the plague, and it all will, will take one very simple little tin count to eradicate John Cena and everything that he stands for. And I know, John, I know you're feeling the pressure too, man. 
That's why you're up, you, you've up and went and recruited the Usos to be your new pawns. But you forgot to tell them the fact that you are just going to throw them on the front lines just to watch them fall. And right behind them you will be riding oh so valiantly on your horse. Making sure your crown don't get too dirty. Tonight, tonight, my brothers are going to teach the Usos that the bond of cause can never be broken, and that you cannot tame a beast that does not fear. The Usos walk oh so blindly into this deadly alliance, and tonight they will learn the fact that there are worse things in this world than dying. When your city burned, I was there. When the plague swept your city streets, I was there. And when John Cena falls and his Sea Nation crumbles, there I will be standing. I am forever. I will always be, and I have always been. And then he evilly speaks in tongues and ends the promo. Dear God. <clears throat> Love this stuff, always do. More cryptic Wyatt family promo. I really enjoy it, as I always do. So, yeah. We get our next match, which is a non-title match. United States champion Sheamus against Alberto Del Rio. Another person that's getting a career uh, boost a little bit with his... Uh, performances on both Raw and SmackDown. Cesaro and Paul Heyman are in commentary for this match, obviously, and that leads to uh, shenanigans, of course, later on in the match. And there's a chin lock by Del Rio, but and Sheamus fights his way out and ends up charging in, goes shoulder first in the ring post. And he basically, that momentum carried him to the floor. So he tosses him back in, whipping, and a kick to the chest... He gets countered, and Sheamus ends up getting neck snapped against the top rope. Axe handle, axe handle, shoulder block into the corner, running knee lift. He charges in, and Del Rio gets both boots up. He goes for the over-the-shoulder power slam, countered into the backstabber, one, two out of that. Goes for the GSK, which gets ducked, and gets a two off of that, out of the roll-up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Irish curse backbreaker gets a two off of that. And basically, he sets up one more time. Mm, excuse me. Ooh, excuse me. He goes for the Finley roll. It looks like he was setting up actually for white noise at this point. Sheamus counters, going for the cross arm breaker. He misses the brogue, gets crossed on the top rope, and gets knocked to the apron. When he comes back into the ring, Del Rio super kick out of nowhere. Makes a two off of that, and Del Rio misses the Del Rio slide, and Sheamus nails him with the clubbing blows. Goes for white noise yet again, and he goes to grab one of the ropes, and instead of the referee kicking his hands like did back in the old days, it basically gets countered. Cross arm breaker by Del Rio, and Sheamus tries to fight out of it, gets to the bottom rope at the last second. Cesaro tries to do something, and Sheamus pops him with a right hand, and... Power slam on Del Rio. He sets up for the brogue kick. Cesaro pulls him to the floor, sends him into the steps, which nails him back of the head into the ring steps, and this allows for a neutralizer on the floor, laying out Sheamus. After the match is after the match is completely over, Cesaro shakes Sheamus' limp hand, which is all he wanted in the first place. All Sheamus wanted was the code of honor. Cesaro should know something about that. So, yes, that is the end of this, and of course, this is also going to lead to Sheamus defending the United States Championship against Cesaro at Payback. Do I think you take the title off Sheamus right away? I don't think so, at least not on their first meeting. Then again, if they're, it depends on what they're going to do with Money in the Bank. I think Cesaro wins Money in the Bank, so having Sheamus win... Barely, I would say, would be fine. Sheamus does not need to decisively win at all. No way. I will say that when this pretty much goes down on Raw tonight and we actually get the match at the pay-per-view, I think that we're going to get something out of it. I don't think that Sheamus loses. I don't think Sheamus does not leave Payback without the United States Championship because I think Cesaro is going to win Money in the Bank. That being said, if Cesaro is not going to win Money in the Bank, I don't think Sheamus loses the cha championship. I do think Sheamus will lose the championship. Sorry. All over the place, like I said. So, yeah, that's what I think is going to end up happening. We got our main event of the evening. But before so, <clears throat> Vicky comes out and says that she can party with the best of them. So she calls out Adam Rose. 
And here comes the Rosebuds to the ring, and basically, he plays a little sing-along with the UK crowd, and it's party time all the time, don't be a lemon, be a rosebud, and asks Vicky if she's a lemon or a rosebud, the fans chant lemon. Vicky gets crazed and says, I'm not a lemon, I am not a lemon, and for some reason she says, let's, I'm a, you need, you have 30 seconds to leave my ring. So, she goes to the ring apron, and Adam Rose has the uh, the strawberry lolly in his mouth, obviously, and he goes to give it to Vicky, and she's like, ooh, no, and he does it numerous times, and finally he does it so many times that she actually falls off the ring apron onto the Rosebuds, and they basically crowd surf her out of the arena. So, yes, that was really interesting. So, yeah, it was out there. Uh, no mention of the Jack Swagger match, that if it's going to happen or not, on uh, Payback, which seems like it's going to. I think that gets talked about tonight on Raw, actually, if you want to go in that direction. We get Renee with the Usos, basically talking about how that's the Usos kind of party, referring to Adam Rose. And they said they're real family and like the Wyatts, and they're big and bad and ugly as hell, but they're, they are the tag team champions. It's funny because we talk about the Oos being little Ooses in 1985 and kicking ass. Well, when they're in 1985, if they were born then, I'm sure they weren't babies kicking ass. That's a very interesting way to put it. So here comes John Cena, and basically he runs his mouth 80s style, and he basically saying that actions speak louder than words. And he says the Wyatts are simply all talk. Anyone can say anything, but it takes real men to back it up, back up their actions. Say what you want, but the Usos have the championships. And they go back into, once again, stealing from Matthew McConaughey and the Wolf of Wall Street. So yes, that's how they end that. I guess that's their solidarity with uh, ripping off Matthew McConaughey. So yeah, there's always that. Main event of the evening is the Usos against the Wyatt Family non-title matchup. John Cena, of course, in the corner of the Usos. Bray Wyatt, of course, in the corner of the Wyatt Family. This match is... It's not short, it's kind of midway, and basically, we go to the hot tag to Eric Rowan, and Jay comes in, he kneels the flying body press on Rowan, sidekick and uppercut, Samoan drop does connect, and then the Rikishi special on Rowan, but before that, Harper nails him, and Jimmy ends up sending Harper to the floor, and he nails a tope on him, Rowan misses the charge, goes post and Jay hits the Samoan suicide dive onto Rowan and then nails Harper for good measure. He tosses Rowan in with the leaping clothesline on the floor. He tosses Rowan back in, goes up top for the big Samoan splash, and Bray charges in and shoves him off for the DQ. So Rowan gets in the ring. John Cena's in the ring, nails the AA, staring into Bray Wyatt's eyes, and that's the end. So yeah. Cena goes to call Bray into the ring. Bray gets up in the ring apron. like, you want to fight? You want to fight? Ah, nope, not. It's going to happen. So he leaves, and that's how we end SmackDown. Okay, um, really interesting to hear what uh, WWE uh, does with the uh, live footage. I'm sure someone got in some serious trouble or was fired for the fact that this got out on the Internet so much quickly that it did, even before the actual SmackDown broadcast. This was available on Wednesday morning. In U.S. time, it was available on, well, at least where I am right now, U.S., it was available Wednesday morning, and I actually could have got it on Wednesday morning, and like I said, we're so busy with Halloween Horror Nights, and all the videos we had to shoot involving movies this weekend just didn't have time, or I would have gotten to it then. But I will say right now that um, Batista and Ziggler is good. Hopefully they do the redo the match on, on Raw tonight. I will think they will. Summer Rae has no friends in Total Divas. Bo Dallas gets a victory in his debut and shakes the hand of his fallen opponent. And the same thing that Cesaro and Sheamus did after uh, Sheamus got laid out with a neutralizer on the floor. And he shook Sheamus' uh, limp hand because he was laying unconscious on the floor courtesy of the neutralizer. Sheamus and Del Rio had a good back and forth match. Usos and the Wyatts were pretty good as well. I will say right now this was five matches and that was it. This felt like a televised house show with great, great talent. Um, 
It was a very action-heavy episode of SmackDown, but it was not very many matches. I mean, they didn't put 35 matches on, like, an hour show. They basically, like, paced everything really well. I thought it worked really well for a show. And, uh, yeah, there was some good stuff on the show. And, like I said, we're leading up towards Payback next Sunday. And, of course, I will be recapping Payback for Pop, as I always do. We're going to talk Raw tonight. And we're going to see what happens with the uh, Payback card when it fleshes itself out tonight on Raw and Friday night on SmackDown. As of this moment, we know we have a no-holds-barred elimination matchup between The Shield and Evolution. We have Bad News Barrett defending the Intercontinental Championship against Rob Van Dam. We have Sheamus defending the United States Championship against Cesaro. And, of course, we have Adam Rose taking on Jack Swagger, which hasn't been officially announced yet. I would guess that we're going to get the Usos defending the Tag Team Championships against the Wyatt family, have the Wyatts win, and have Bray Wyatt beat John Cena to have the Wyatts literally stand tall ending the show. I mean, at this point, if they're going to strip Daniel Bryan tonight on Raw, which we will find out in a couple of hours, I will say that, you know, you could put the... Bray Wyatt's a person you could put the title on, so, I mean, I don't think you're going to. I think if they put it on anybody, it'd be a Triple H at this point. But yeah, just to build more heat when uh, Brian returns in a couple of months. So, we also have, like I said, that main event. It is John Cena, Bray Wyatt, Last Man Standing. So yeah, that is payback, and that will be next Sunday. We'll be talking talking about that on, uh, depending on my schedule, it should be, uh, it'd be your Monday video for sure. So yeah, we'll get that taken care of. So yeah, that was a very disjointed NXT and SmackDown. Sorry about that. I guess that my notes will probably be a little bit more coherent this week for Raw tonight because I won't be doing the whole small print. I have to do that basically because I know when something's going to happen. When I don't know when I'm watching a live show like Raw or a pay-per-view, I basically start like a couple minutes in if I think it's going to be a, sh a short match or I start like five or ten minutes in if I think it's going to be a long match or if I decide it's going to be going to pass the first commercial break, I'm probably going to start writing after the commercial break. So that's pretty much how it works for me. Good thing. So, I'm going to go have lunch because it is after 12.30 and I need to uh, rejuvenate myself because obviously tonight I have to work. So, because I have to work tonight, I am not going to be able to get the uh, raw recap to you guys tonight. Normally it's up about like 1 or 2 in the morning, but I cannot do that tonight. I will say that I'm going to come back after I get off work at 11. Yeah, bad timing, I'm aware. But... I gotta make the money, you know that. I gotta make the money to go home twice a year. That's just how it works with me. So, because of that fact, the Raw video will literally be Tuesday. I will get up Tuesday morning and I will do the Raw video. Because I don't have to work Tuesday or Wednesday, so I'm just gonna do that Raw watch. And then I'm going to recap it. And then I'm going to focus on, obviously, B-Dubs Tuesday night. Because AJ and I are gonna do B-Dubs Tuesday night. Wednesday, I'm just gonna relax. Do a Halloween Horror Nights video. Thursday, I gotta work again, get off five, Long John Silvers, and then of course we're watching Maleficent, and uh, Maleficent and um, A Million Ways to Die in the West will be part of the video for this coming week of AJ's movie reviews, and Versus will be uh, taking something into account that's coming out this week. Let's just say this Versus happened once upon a dream. So, in the meantime, if you like these videos, tell your friends about them, leave a comment, do subscribe, and help spread the word about Pop. If you like Pop and you like our content on here, tell us so by liking our Facebook fan page. It is under Sir Owen Disney Pop. And if you'd like to send me a friend request on Facebook, a lot of you out there have, and I t totally appreciate that. It is Owen Disney. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Sir Owen Disney. And last but certainly not least, you want to send your thoughts, comments, queries, and opinions. You want to talk wrestling with me, Disney, Universal, Halloween, Horror Nights. You want to ask me questions, things I would never talk about on here. You want to know things personally from me. You're more than welcome to send me an email that way. Or if you'd like to become part of this podcast revolution, send your videos to SirOwenDisney at gmail.com. Wrestling fans, I'll join you again tomorrow. So in the meantime, thank you guys and girls out there for watching, and until tomorrow, boys and girls, that's all I gotta say about that.